The American people deserve that. Here with Reaction, the editor-in-chief of Life Z, Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio host, Laura Ingram. Um, your reaction, funny, Chris Wallace, we both agree, is tough on both sides. He had the same exact comment as Van Jones. What did you think? I think that this was the speech that a lot of us have been waiting for. I think, uh, you know, like one, one criticism of the speech, I guess, could be it would have been nice to have that speech as the inaugural address. But... Look, these guys are just uh, they're like five weeks into this, and I think they're, they, they, they're, they're getting their footing. They have their footing now, I think, on messaging and communications, much to the chagrin of the left. I think it was appropriate that all the female Democrat congresswomen wore the flag of surrender, basically their white outfits. I mean, the color of the surrender. The flag of surrender, you're night. calling yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, it was just like all, they were all dressed in white. I'm like, yeah, I'd put up the white flag, too, if I were listening to this speech. And, and they were grasping afterward for anything negative to say and, and it was good that van jones had had you know was, was honest about it and it was good that you know rachel maddow said that she could not understand i'm paraphrasing why the democrats had such a lame rebuttal when they supposedly have such a deep bench so the Democrats have to have to figure out, like, where do they go from here? Is it just going to be Russia, 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 impeach, 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 uh, Bannon, Bannon, Miller, Miller? I mean, at some point, do they have anything substantive to say? Or they, they are just not going to work with the president on even the issues they agree with him on, Sean, which was stunning, the reaction shots that you played. Even on the issues where Democrats agree now and have agreed in the past, including on the trade issue, uh, a lot of Democrats agree with where Trump is going on that. They're just sitting on their hands. I, it's just so disingenuous. And, and it's, it really, they're putting their party before their country and, and, and their policies, frankly, are, are in the backseat as well. So it's, it's a befuddling time for the Democrat Party, for sure. And Trump I, did a great job. I, after the speech last night, I, I, I had a really good interview with Speaker Gingrich. And I'm, I've been worried about the pace of Congress a little bit. And I talked to some yes, of the Freedom me Caucus members. They have different views than, say, maybe the, the Speaker. And I'm, sh I'm worried about some communication issues within Congress. But what he actually said was pretty interesting, that it'll go in a box. And the box will include, what do you need to pass this health care bill? What do you need? And then it'll be worked out. Unfortunately, that's a sausage-making process of legislation. Are you confident that Congress does their part to the extent Ca that we need yeah. it? I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, I, I, had, I think we have to remember what happened to the Republican Party in 2006, Sean. We had a big spending uh, Republican Party in the second Bush term, especially. Obviously, a lot of it was the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. We spent an enormous amount of money. We had big entitlement uh, program growth with the Medicare uh, Part D with uh, Bush uh, doing that uh, legislation with the Democrats. We have to be careful that we don't become deficit doves. Uh, Mike Pence was known as a deficit hawk during his time in Congress. And I think it's, it's great to do all these programs. I think we obviously have to fix these bridges and so forth. But there has to be meaningful cuts and not just rely on future growth in order to get some of this done. So I have some, uh, you know, I have some agreement with what the Freedom Caucus is saying here, because yeah, I we do don't want to get I'm... ourselves in a hole here on the deficit. I mean, we were just starting to trim the deficit with the sequester cuts. And everybody wants to spend $54 billion on the military, but we cannot do what Obama did and just keep shoveling debt and deficit pain onto the next generation. So well, I, the, wor I think the worst thing I think we could do is let Congress spend the money. I would like to see some outside entity created that will manage every penny and every nickel. And if, if we stretch those dollars, we'll get five times the amount of value out of it because we waste 50 cents on every dollar when, when Congress controls it and they pat each other on the back and then I'll support your project, you support mine. That doesn't yeah, work. I think there's a lot, there is a lot of fat, but as we know, the Social Security and Medicare uh, and disability payments, those still take up the lion's share of this budget. So uh, there's, it's like you have, to be, you have to be super careful how you do it, but you, you, there's a lot of balance, balancing to do. You're, no one's going to get everything they want in this. Yeah. To get meaningful health care reform, people are going to have to give up on some of their, some of their pet you know, issues here because you're not going to get anything done unless people are willing to give a little energy, bit. But Trump the has a mandate, I think. Energy, the corporate tax rate, the repatriation, the middle tax yeah. cut, um, getting rid of Obamacare, that helps the economy. But i, I got to roll. Laura, uh, always appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Great to see you. All right, coming up, Ann Coulter in studio. Coming up next, her reaction to the president's address and also later tonight. Why not join forces 
and finally get the job done and get it done right. President Trump reaching out to Democrats, asking them to work with Republicans on behalf of you, the American people. Will they ever do it? I tend to doubt it. Later tonight, Larry Elder, Ari Fleischer, Anthony Scaramucci.